What up, everybody? It's your boy, Agent Nora, back again. Week 7 of college football is upon us, and it's been a crazy season thus far. Yes, week 7, man. I can't believe it myself. Um, it's been a crazy season thus far. There's been not a notorious number one. I know Georgia State number one, but every team's looked shaky this year, and it's been a crazy season. But I'm here to give you my week 7 picks, man. Let's get it. I got 8 games, a bonus pick, so we got a total of 9 games. Um, after after this week, I'll give you guys a uh my record total for after coming into next week. I, it's pretty good, man. I've been pretty hot so far in college football, which normally I'm not. But let's get it started. Michigan State travels to Piscataway, New Jersey, to take on Rutgers. Rutgers minus five and a half. Give me the Scarlet Knights to win this one. Michigan State's coming off a of bye week, but I do believe Rutgers will find a way to win this with, with the quarterback Gav, Gavin Wismat. Uh, Rutgers is playing hard. They're just, you know, they're they're still down a little bit, but I believe they'll be a wounded Michigan State team, especially with the Mel Tucker situation. Now let's hop on Sunbelt Conference, one of my favorite conferences that nobody talks about. Georgia Southern travels to James Madison University, one of my darlings of this season, man. I've been really high on them all year. Um, I've bettered them a lot this year, and they've come through big for me. The second year in the FBS, um, they're not bowl eligible yet, which is a ridiculous rule. They have to be in for at least two years. Um, they've been the best team in the Sun Belt since they've been there. Um, give me jo James Madison to win this game outright. Jordan McLeod will ball out, throw the ball to Reggie Brown. James Madison will continue to stay undefeated. Yes, undefeated and go 6-0, baby. Um, now, one of the biggest games of the weekend, number eight Oregon Ducks travel to Washington Huskies, number seven in the country. Washington's minus three. Everybody is on the Washington bandwagon. Um, but guess what? I'm deferring. I'm going Oregon Ducks, baby, and Bo Nix, which I normally don't trust in, but I believe he'll find a way to get the job done. And I think the key to this game is the running game of Oregon. They've stayed efficient throughout this season. Bucky Irvin will be the X factor in this game and run the ball. Now, I'm not saying Washington can't run the ball, but they haven't shown me the ability to do it on a consistent basis. I know they ran over 33 times against Michigan State on the road, but that game was a blowout by halftime. So give me the Oregon Ducks in the upset. Technically, um, the underdog in this game, Oregon, will continue their quest to win the Pac-12 in its last year. Now, let's travel to Ohio Bobcats in the MAC, take on Northern Illinois. Um, minus six and a half, Ohio Bobcats. I believe they'll, they'll run away with this game. Northern Illinois is not good. Rocky Lombardi, former Michigan State guy, five touchdowns, four picks. I feel like he's been there forever. Northern Illinois won't get the job done. They're not a very good football team, so give me Ohio in the runaway. Now, let's go to a big, a very a physical Big Ten matchup. Iowa Hawkeyes travel to the Wisconsin Badgers and Camp Randall to take on Wisconsin. Wisconsin's minus 10. Gave me Wisconsin um, straight up. Um, Tanner Mordecai has a point to prove. The offense trying to improve. Um, Phil Longo came in. First year, first year offensive coordinator, formerly at North Carolina. He's been all over the place. Luke Fickles bringing his, his first year. Um, Tanner, Tanner Mordecai, three touchdowns, three picks. But I believe Braylon Allen will be the, the reason why they win this game. They'll run the ball, even get him get him in the passing game, and Wisconsin will run away with this game. But I believe Iowa still covers. But Wisconsin, give me them. They need to win this game to win the West. All right, number five game, number six game of the week. Louisville, minus seven and a half, travels to Pittsburgh to take on a terrible pit team, one and four. One of the worst pit teams I've seen in the Pat Narduzzi era, Phil Phil Jakovic has been benched. He's played horrible. Um, I think Louisville will sleepwalk a little bit in this game early, but J Jack Plummer and company will find a way to get the ball. He'll get the ball to Jamari Thrash. Um, Louisville will pull away late in this game, cover this sign of seven and a half, giving Louisville a stand to fit it and keep this Cinderella season alive in Jeff Brown's first year as coach. All right, a couple games left, guys. Marshall, one of my darlings, takes on Georgia State on the road. Georgia State minus one and a half. Give me Marshall in the points. All I got to say it again, I'm going to keep talking about it as the season goes along. Rasheen Ali, only other person that has more rushing touchdowns than him is Blake Corum. This guy's the Charles Huff, um, contending for a P5 coaching job. He's done a great job at Marshall coming over from, from Alabama, previously at Penn State as well. Um, I believe he's a great coach. Um, they suffered a tough, a, a tough loss to NC State, 48-41 on the road where they had some few turnovers. But give me Marshall on this one. A couple games of two more. Number 10, UFC Trojans travel to South Bend, Indiana to take on the number 21, Notre Dame Fighting Irish. Now, the Fighting Irish coming off a tough loss in prime time against Louisville Cardinal, who are ready. Notre Dame was gassed, right energy, but they're coming to this game. They're ready. South Bend will be jumping again like it did in the Notre Dame game. USC plays no defense. Uh, bottom five in the FBS and giving up 20-yard plays. I believe it's 38. Um, Caleb Love can do a lot, but I just don't think he has enough, especially with his defense. Um, Benjamin Morrison, Notre Dame's cornerback, I believe will get a pick in this game. Sam Hartman will play better. Marcus Freeman will get his signature win. Upset the undefeated Notre Dame. I mean, USC Trojans, man. Give me Notre Dame. 
<clears throat> Notre Dame, and then, by the way, USC is getting 37.8 points per game in our last three games. Not good enough. All right, my bonus game. Navy, the Navy midshipmen travel to Charlotte to fight on the Biff Pogies. Charlotte's plus three and a half. Give me Charlotte plus three and a half. I believe they, they're they really one-dimensional, but I believe they'll hang in this game. You know, Navy runs the football, but give me Charlotte to cover the, cover the spread. Um, Navy wins by a field goal, but Charlotte covers just three and a half. These are my picks for week seven, man. Let me know what you guys think, man. Hey, it's going to be a great college football weekend. Hey, it's your boy Adrian, and I'm out.